Hi, my name is Jason and this is my blog called Living with CMT. I hope you enjoy. Good evening, folks. It's uh, Bank Holiday Monday and it's five to six. I've not done anything the last couple of days. I'm still, believe it or not, trying to get over this cold. It's um, nowhere near as bad as it was, but it's still irritating and annoying me. It goes for a bit and then it comes back. Uh, we didn't get out yesterday. But we did manage to go out today. Uh, we only nipped to the co-op uh, because we needed some essentials, but we have actually managed to buy some, <laughs> which is good. Excuse me, problem with me back today. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've had quite a lot of nausea as well in the last couple of days. I don't know whether we, we sort of almost ran out of tea bags, so I switched to drinking Assam. Now, I've not drunk it before, and I'm not sure if it's a little bit strong for me. Although the strange thing is, I have English breakfast tea bags all the time. That's my main brew. And they've got Assam in them. They're a mix of Assam, Ceylon, and I can't remember the other one. But they're a, member of, they're a mixture of three. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't have any problems with them. They're really, really good, uh, really decent. If ever you get a chance to try English breakfast and people say, oh, they're just like normal tea. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're totally different. If you, if you, if you know about your tea, you'll know that they're totally different. Anyway, I suppose I better say, woo, congratulations, another royal baby's been born. But I don't really give a toss, so I'm just saying it just for the fact, just for the sake of it, to be honest. I'm not bothered. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, people have babies every single day, and some have 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, and they don't get publicised. But of course, because it's a royal, we've got to know all about it. We'll have to know when it gets its first tooth, when it walks its first step, when it says its first word, which will probably be more me, uh, money, sorry, or something like that. Um, it's another case of another privileged one being born. And at the same time, I noticed what was funny. At the same time that article was there, underneath it in small print was um, an article just describing how the world is disappearing at a rate of knots and every species uh, species are being wiped out on a daily basis. But that's not important. That's not important. As long as the royal baby's born, that's not important. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm, I'm big on things like nature conservation and stuff like that. Uh, it's one of my main bugbears uh, that we destroying species at a rate of knots, but we don't care because obviously, you know, as long as we're all right, pull the ladder up Jack and sod the rest. So if another species disappears, who cares? You know, who cares? Um, the white rhino is one that's almost gone now. I saw the other day they were on about squirrels and apparently uh, there's over a million species that are constantly they, they're being monitored basically because they could be wiped off the planet. Now, when you think of a species being wiped off the planet, it's quite distressing because this is a species that's been on the planet longer than us. And yet we are quite prepared to stand by and watch it eradicated. You know, mind you, I suppose if we can do it with human beings, we can do it with animals. Because like I say, we're an uncaring bunch, which is really sad, which is really sad, to be honest with you. Uh, like I said, not done a lot. I basically concentrated on, I did a little bit of a jigsaw yesterday. I did the boarding, but I could only manage the boarding. And after that, my back was hurting too much. My fingers were hurting too much. My arms are hurting too much. So I gave that a miss. I watched a lot of football. A lot of football over the last couple of days. Unfortunately, Cardiff got relegated. I don't like to see any team relegated from any league. And it's very, very sad. I thought um, Neil Warner. Is it Neil Warner? Yeah, I thought Neil Warner did a fantastic job with him. And he did all he can. I hope he stays with him because they need a manager like him, who's got the passion for football, and still in his 70s, so way to go in. Um, it was funny the other day, actually, watching uh, Crystal Palace against Cardiff to see two English managers uh, both on the pitch at the same time, which was very strange. That's something you don't see very often in our game, I'm telling you. Anyway, I, I saw they got relegated, and on the German side of it, uh, Dortmund looked like they might have thrown away the title because they're playing rubbish at the moment. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Bayern Munich look like they're going to walk that again uh, with a couple of games left. I think they've only got win one more or something and they virtually guaranteed the title. Uh, I see Juventus have won their title and Paris Saint-Germain have won theirs. Celtic, congratulations, an eighth straight title. I don't think you're going to find it as easy next year, but we'll see. Uh, the only trouble is I've got with Celtic is they don't do anything in Europe. You know, they're a really, really, really good team and yet you'd expect them to do more in Europe and they just don't. You just fail. And it, it's really, really sad and sad for, you know, Scottish fans. And there was a debate going on the other day, actually, on BT Sports, on the on the, on the Sports Centre. And it was a, a bit of an argument, really, between Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage. And Robbie Savage said that it would be more of an honour to manage Rangers or Celtic than it would 
to manage the Scottish national team. And Chris Sutton quite rightly said, surely it's the highest accolade of any manager to want to manage internationally. Because I know all the football games I've ever played, manager games, you manage your team first, and only if you're a manager of the highest standards will you even get considered for an international job on any of the games I've played. Otherwise, you get somebody like Q8 or Iraq or something like that if you don't play very well. So it was a bit of a strange one, and I agree with Chris Sutton 100%. It would be more of an honour to manage my country than it would to be managed my club. Yes, I'm a Liverpool fan. I love Liverpool 100%. But if somebody said to me, you know, manage England, I wouldn't turn around and say, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. You know, it's a bit, a bit sad, really. Uh, but on another note, I watched the German football, and I watched a match between Leverkusen and Eintracht Frankfurt, and it was supposed to be a really close match yesterday. And it was 6-1 at half time. 6-1 at half time to uh, Leverkusen. They went on to stay 6-1, but I've never seen a match be 6-1 at half time. It was quite astounding. They literally, every time they got the ball, they scored, which was a bit strange. But the one match I did watch, and I was really, really, really impressed with, wasn't one of these high-ranking matches or nothing like that. This was actually a playoff conference game between Salford City and Eastleigh. And it was a really, really good semi-final. The passion in the match was unbelievable. And when they got injuries, they were just standing up and, uh, no, I'll carry on, I'll carry on, you know, use a bit of the spray on me, I'll be fine. There was no whinging, wear routine stretches every five minutes, nothing like that. I mean, one guy ended up with an egg on his head, the size of, God, it was massive, literally a big bump on the front of his head, and he carried on playing. Now, I know there's dangers with concussion and all that to take into account, but this just showed you how determined he was to get his team through. And in the end, his team did get through. They won on penalties. But it was a really, really good game. I didn't know it was going to be that good. And the funny thing is, in the final, they now play a team called AFC Fylde, which is another one of my local teams, because obviously I live in Blackpool. There's Fleetwood Town, which is just up the road. And if AFC Fylde could get in the league as well, that would be all three of the teams, which would be an absolute massive achievement for you know a place so small. It would be absolutely brilliant. Anyway, well, I also have had something, and I didn't know this was out. Everybody knows it. Last year, if you were watching my vlogs, um, I was very, very upset when uh, Dolores O'Riordan passed away. Um, it was, I'm a big fan of the Cranberries. I'm mad on the Cranberries. I've got all their CDs and everything. And I was really, really upset because obviously now she's passed away. You know, no more music from the Cranberries. And I was only reading an article yesterday by accident. I just saw it on there. And it was an interview with the band on how hard it was to produce an album without Dolores. And I thought, hey, I didn't know they had. Anyway, I went on and I found out that they bought this out. I don't know if you can see that. It's the Cranberries and it's called In The End. And it's a posthumous album. There's, there's the track listing on the back. It's a posthumous album, but it's not just been thrown together. Apparently, she'd already, they'd already made plans for another studio album. And they'd started recording the tracks. They'd started getting them down. They got all the vocals from her and everything. And uh, they've managed to compile it together. And uh, we, we've got a, you know, a fantastic album. That's come today. That's the limited edition, deluxe uh, edition, because it's in a hardback book, as you can see. It's got, um, I'm going to look forward to that. I haven't opened it yet. It's got um, information about the group and photos and everything. So I'm really looking forward to that. Because when some singers pass away, and you've been listening to them for years, it's like being, I don't know, it's just strange, because you suddenly think, wow, no more new music. The same with The Prodigy, you know, Keith Flint, the same with, the, same with him. We're not going to get to hear his vocals on any new tracks now, because he's gone, and it, it's massive. And, uh, you know, I think that it's one of them things where if, you, if you're a music fan, it really hits you. If you're not a music fan, you don't really give a monkey's. People seem to be more bothered if uh, a reality star takes their own life or something, which, to be honest, yes, it's a, it's a very, very sad and depressing situation. But when they take on that role of going into these reality shows, more should be done for them. Because I can imagine them being very hard on you. They can be very distressing. I mean, I've never been on one and I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to in a million years. You know, um, I wouldn't be on any good at things like anything involving anything physical anyway, to be perfectly honest with you. And I'm not really big brother material either. But yeah, it's been it's been not too bad weather. You know, the weather's okay outside. It's a bit chilly though. It's only about nine degrees. And um I've only got just over what is it now? What are we on the fifth, sixth, thirteenth, twentieth? Just over two and a bit weeks. And I go down to Stoke for my sister's wedding. And that's flying, that is really going quick. 
Uh, on a plus side, like I say, we get to see me uh, friends for a few days. So that'll be nice. We, we haven't seen him for a long time. And Ian, Ian Maddock, my bud, I've known him since I was, like I said before, since I was 15, 16. So I've known him 30 years of my life, which is a long time to know somebody. I started playing a bit of um, Batman Lego 2 yesterday um, on Game Pass because me, uh, other one, I completed 100% Pirates of the Caribbean. And I'm only doing a little bit each night because, like I said, these don't want to function like they used to be able to function. And it's, it's annoying. It's very annoying because it's a hobby. And uh, I don't like giving up my hobbies. Uh, but hey-ho, you, you, you live and learn, don't you? You move on. And I mentioned it before, the Xbox Game Pass are doing three months for a pound at the moment. So anybody who's interested, just get on there and get it for a quid. It's well worth it. I mean, my wife sat down the other day because she said, what kind of games are on it? And I showed her the list of the games that are on Xbox Game Pass. And she was absolutely blown away. She couldn't believe it. She was like, you get all that lot? I said, yeah. I said, and you can play them unlimited every month for 7 99 And it's just it's well worth it. It beats going out and spending 35 40 pound on per game, I'll tell you. Now, I might have a surprise tomorrow. I'm hoping it comes, so I'm not going to say too much. And if it does, it's going to make good filming. Um, it'll cheer. It'll make me make Steve Cook smile anyway, because uh, he loves it when I get these mystery boxes and stuff. But if it comes, it's fantastic, and you wouldn't believe the value in it. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you're all fantastic on this bank holiday and that you've had a really, really good time. Uh, for apologies to all those people who keep wishing me happy, uh, wishing me to wish people happy Mother's Day. Unfortunately, in the UK, our Mother's Day was about a month ago. So when you're saying, you know, happy Mother's Day, and I'm not saying it back, it's because at the end of the day, I think you're in, is it America or Australia that celebrate Mother's Day soon or now? Whereas we celebrated it a month ago. We're weird like that in the UK. Anyway, you all take care and I'll do another video tomorrow. Bye for now. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the vlog and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and a like. Thank you very much. And if you like what you saw, you can subscribe by clicking there. And if you want to see what I did yesterday, you've just got to click up there. Bye for now.